Do you know what's in your food? Thanks for tuning in folks. This is Carl over at HunzaHealthy.com and in this video we're going to interview Dr. Shumei Huang, a leading physician scientist in movement disorders at Penn State College of Medicine. Dr. Huang is going to be telling us about her research regarding a common pesticide and its potential relationship to the development of Parkinson's disease. Thanks again for watching. We're here with Dr. Shumei Wong, a movement disorders physician and neuroscientist at the Penn State College of Medicine. And we'll be talking with Dr. Wong today about her research on the topic of Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease and its potential connection to a common pesticide. Thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing this time with me today and sharing with us. Oh, well, thank you. So, Dr. Wong. In addition to being an expert researcher in movement disorders uh, like Parkinson's disease, you're also a leading physician specialist that sees this disorder every day. I do. And uh, would you please tell us what is Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease and why do people get it? Yeah, Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive disease that affects affect brain function, which we thought due to loss of a cell making dopamine. We don't know exactly what causes it, but it's more affect the people when we grow older. And it's generally present as people have tremor when they're resting, and moving slow, and some stiffness, changing posture, changing how they walk. And the average time of diagnosis is about 62 years old. And at this moment, about 1 to 2% of the population older than 60, I say, have the disease in this, uh, in this uh, country. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well. We don't know what exactly caused it, and so we think maybe the best way to, we suspect, is probably is a, our genetic susceptibility okay. and interact with the environmental factors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So um, Parkinson's is a is common age-related, right, uh, movement disorder that results from brain degeneration. Right, the brain probably cell death. Yeah. Yeah, but are the environmental causes are a little unclear at this point? Would it, you say? We think environmental factor probably do play a role okay. because majority of people with Parkinson don't have family history. Okay. So namely, seventy percent oh. of people have disease. You look track down their family history, nobody have disease. Interesting. In addition, if you are identical twins, we we born with the same genes, mm -hmm. we frequently are not see. The twin, if one person has disease, the other one don't have it. Ah, so that okay. means uh, not our genetic makeup determining whether we have Parkinson's or not. So environmental factor or how we behave in our lifetime right, may right. play a role. So right. that's why we're thinking maybe the environmental factor play a role. Okay. So your team recently published research suggesting that a common pesticide uh, might contribute to Parkinson's disease in some people. Would you care to tell us about what you found? We'd love to share that. I think it's very exciting. And uh, as I mentioned, environmental factors have been suspected to relate to Parkinson's disease. And there's a many hypotheses or suspicion for many environmental factors. Okay. The reason draw our attention to pesticide is because, first of all, pesticides such as paraquat, which is very commonly used, have been known in animal models to cause brain change similar to Parkinson's disease. Okay. Second of all, in the population study, and then so the scientists in California, for example, show the population live in the area have a higher concentration of environmental pesticide exposure, such okay. as paraquat. Mm -hmm. They increase the risk of that population to have Parkinson's compared to another population living in a zip code have low exposure. So okay. that's actually makes us very interested in the in the pesticide. So we're we're gonna ask the question, okay, so if people chronically exposed to pesticide don't have disease yet, do they have a change similar to Parkinson's disease? Right. The, the premise is, is that you know for sure that Parkinson didn't happen overnight. Right, right. It's not like stroke heart attack, yes that you're normal today, hard you know, hard part of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. So okay. pretty much we're thinking what we do today before age 65 right. and then probably pave the road of brain right. change. We also know that brain is actually very resilient. Mm -hmm. So we actually can lo lose a lot of dopamine cells without okay. missing it. Right. We know right. for a fact that we can lose 50% of dopamine cells 
1,000 percent with Parkinson's really? okay. disease. And okay. then, so we actually, our, our team asked the question, if we have a chronic exposure to pesticide, mm -hmm. what happened to the dopamine cell? At least the location. Uh, so the question was actually uh, paved the road by, we are very interested in Parkinson's disease. We use a brain imaging modality so called MRI. Do you know MRI, right? Yes, the yeah. one we commonly use to look at a picture mm -hmm. of the brain. So we focus, use MR to focus on brain region making dopamine cells. We found the Parkinson's uh, patient have changes compared to people who don't have Parkinson's disease. Uh. With that knowledge, we actually did bring MR of the people, about a dozen of farmers chronically exposed to the pesticide. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so look at the brain region making dopamine cells. We found actually the, the farmers exposed to the uh, pesticide for a long time. Okay. They look normal now, right. but the brain actually have changes similar right. to Parkinson's disease. So that's what we found. Okay, yeah, now you just answered a couple of my Question. next questions here, which is really good. Because yeah. um, I, I noticed um, in reading, your team had scanned brains of agricultural workers, workers yes. and found that um, a lot of their brains looked about halfway between Parkinson's and normal individuals. Yeah, is that right? you're absolutely right on yeah. that. And then, okay. So that's very intriguing for our team because sure. we asked the question, could that be this agricultural workers on the way to develop Parkinson's in their halfway? Oh, the brain just have a vulnerability now because right. the pe pesticide maybe make their brain more vulnerable to have dopamine right. cell loss in the future. So um, definitely we add more evidence on top of the animal study, population study, and our study together because really strengthen our case, maybe pesticide have something to do with the Parkinson's. Okay. Although the jury is still probably out because our sample size only have 12 people. Sure. And, um, and also we don't really know for sure next 10, 20, 30 years they will have disease. Right. So the future that entails probably need a bigger study and also long term follow up those people so we can sure. make a conclusion. It's a long-term project, right? Exactly. Yeah. But we have started the, the hope for that, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, really interesting. That answers these questions. I, so let me ask you this. Um, because this new evidence seems relatively uh, or relevant to a wide audience, um, what, what would be your takeaway message to the people who are watching or listening here? Yeah. Um, the first of all, I, I don't want generally a panic. About you know, can pesticide for sure cause Parkinson's? They may increase the risk. Doesn't mean everybody exposed to pesticide will for sure have Parkinson's disease. Right. But because of that potential link, I might advise for anybody using pesticide for their professional use, for their gardens, for whatever use, to use precaution. And okay. for example, wear gloves, wear wash gloves. their hands. Wear a mask as a proper instructed by the pesticide. Protect use. yourself. Yeah, just wear a seatbelt because mm -hmm. doesn't mean. Right. Car accident happened, but where a seatbelt decreases the chance of getting injured. Okay. So, so I think before the, we know for sure the answer, I advocate for everybody just precaution until we know the answer. Right. And right. just because we don't know the answer, we want to know the answer, I advocate people to help us with research in this yes. mission. Good, I'm glad you segued to that because that was my next thing is they're doing really uh, incredible research here and so any How about support yourself? is a pretty, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a participant in the welder study and the farmer study. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I can turn around and advocate people like you to help us in any way, any way, the form you can. Sure. Such yeah. as you can volunteer for our study so we can know the life story you dis expose, what you expose, what you not expose. We can look at brain changes and see what the future holds for us. Yeah. So I hope through our generation's effort, we can pave the road to better answer for our next generation. Absolutely. Who knows what the answer yeah. we have when young enough maybe benefit from that knowledge, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time, and I think that listeners are going to be real interested to hear uh, where your research takes you regarding you know this topic. And it's a pleasure to have you share this time with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ple pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you again for your for your effort to help us research. Uh, it's my pleasure. You'll see a website posted here on the screen, folks. Um, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Thank you.